Estou aqui. Então, tudo bem a gente gravar? Claro, tudo bem. Ok. So I'm going to switch the language now. So welcome everybody. Now we're going to have the talk of, of Professor Sandra Padula. She has her doctorate in her PhD in, in physics by the University of Sao Paulo and her postdoc by the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory. And now she works in the collabor CMS collaboration at L LHC at CERN. And um, you have the word, Professor. Thank you so much. So good afternoon to everyone. Uh, I'm really happy to be here and I thank you very much the organizers for the invitation. And uh, I'll take this opportunity also to talk with you a little bit about the field that we've been working uh, in and to let you know what we do at SPRACE, which is Sao Paulo Research and Analysis Center. And uh, we are a small heavy ion group in the, uh, at SPRACE and uh, um, who belong to it, uh, Isabella is part of it, uh, Cesar uh, Bernard is part of it, Daniel Lemos, who's talking tomorrow, Breno, who's talking also tomorrow, but not the heavy ion. He, Breno is working in dark matter. And uh, um, uh, also, we had, uh, we still have a collaboration as uh, Sunil Dogra in Korea, who was a former postdoc. So let me start. I have to talk reasonably fast because um, can you see my transparencies? Yes. Uh, okay, if I uh, start talking too fast, uh, just let me know, okay? Because uh, I, I have a lot of slides and I have to, I'm not managing to play it. Uh, play I think it's okay, now, now it's okay. 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 All right. Do you see it in full? Yes, yes. Okay, good. All right, so I'll talk about uh, quark gluon plasma and trying to give you a panoramic view about the subject. And I will start, it's taking a little while to change. I'm not sure why. Okay, um, so I'll start by telling you when the, this name was given. It was given by Edward Shuriak uh, in the uh, 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 late 70s, at the turn of the uh, 1980s. And you see that it's related to a state of matter, a new state of matter in our world, because it was, uh, conject it's conjecture that it has been produced earlier in, a, uh, in the universe, but uh, uh, it, it is currently known that it's reproduced in the laboratory. And it's related to a state of matter, the new phase of QCD uh, that he named as QCD or quark gluon plasma. Okay, so I'll tell you briefly about the prehistory of the field. Hagedorn in the late 60s uh, had seen, can you see my, my slides, my, my, my figure here? I'm not sure if the picture covers everyone. Okay, I hope so. So Hagedorn was uh, uh, predicting that uh, he realized that as the energy increased, the temperature governing the particle spect spectra did not increase with, it, uh, with the energy increase, but the, uh, instead the number of particles increase. So entropy increased as energy uh, uh, and leading to uh, uh, an additional number of particles, but not increasing the temperature. Uh, so he concluded then that if the number of particles of a given mass or mass spectrum increases exponentially, the temperature would reach a limit, uh, which he estimated as around 150 MeV. So let me see if I can switch now. Uh, this is one side. So until the be uh, uh, beginning of the 70s, people were considering that there was a, a, a limitation for uh, the temperature that would be reachable uh, in, 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 as you increase the energy. However, in the early 70s, uh, uh, later uh, they got the Nobel Prize in 2004, Gross, David Gross, Frank Wilczek, and David Pulitzer proposed or show that the QCD coupling constant alpha S was going to zero, was really decreasing. It's the running coupling constant at high energies 
so that at short distances, it would be close to zero. So the, the system, when at high energies or short distances, would behave as practically free. Asymptotic freedom then led to the idea that the confined quarks and gluons would be uh, uh, would have an existence when you reach at high densities or pressures. So you see on the plot on the uh, right hand side, this is the uh, plot for the alpha s, the running coupling constant, alpha s in terms of the energy involved. So when you have uh, uh, low energies, the coupling is strong, and the uh, the, uh, the behavior is non perturbative, and this leads to what was called infrared slavery. On the opposite, if you go uh, to very high energies, the coupling becomes weak in the sense that yeah, the, the system would start to behave as if it was practically free. So, this was uh, called the asymptotic freedom. Uh, as I tried to say that uh, it's conjecture that in the beginning of the universe, uh, this state of matter con uh, consisted of three moving quarks and gluons existed a few minutes after the Big Bang, a, a few minutes, I'm sorry, 10 to minus uh, micro, a few microseconds, I would mean to say, uh, after the Big Bang, uh, these would happen uh, in a state where you see here, you see quarks and the quarks, um, uh, uh, gluons together with electrons, neutrinos, everybody was freely moving until about 10 to minus five seconds when the system evolved and uh, cooled down. And then the, the, the uh, building blocks of the strong, uh, the, the, or whatever are the hadrons, uh, started to be confined inside what, uh, what we know now as mesons, QQ bar pairs and buttons with three quarks on antibionics with three antiquarks. And then it evolved uh, as th the time passed by until this, the, the, the universe that we know nowadays with the stars, clusters and stars and so forth. So uh, the usual matter uh, is, uh, as you see, there are many tentatives to see if we could see fractional charge in, in, a, in experiments similar to Millikan's. But uh, uh, since because we knew that if an electron is hit by a photon, we can ionize the atom. So the question was, well, can we see are quarks free to get out of the, the, the hadrons? And the answer is no, never seen. So, uh, but the idea was, can we remove one quark doing this, playing the same game, trying to insert some energy and try to remove the quark? So if we start with the white proton, uh, uh, and then we, we try to pull a quark apart. What happens is that a, a, a strong color field uh, uh, appears and it tries to, to hold the quark that is being pulled out so that at a certain point, it's more, uh, uh, it's more uh, energetic flavorable to make a quark and a quark pair pull out of the vacuum, and then you have again uh, two uh, uh, hadronized quarks. That is, you recover the proton and probably you get a by mesons, a by zero, or you get another kind of hadron, which is white in terms of color, and another baron, uh, uh, another meson to compose it, and you cannot remove the quark from the, from the baryon. So as you see here, uh, you see that uh, the, the idea was, okay, can we regenerate this quark that we suppose that existed in the few microseconds after the Big Bang? And uh, as I was saying, in, in normal matter, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, quarks fill up, uh, took roughly uh, approximately this uh, kind of uh, potential. That is, it's Coulomb-like. Uh, at shorter distance, but if you try to pull the quarks apart, the, the, the energy grows. I'm sorry, it went away, I don't know why. Uh, the energy grows and you cannot pull them apart. So based on QCD, the expectation was if you hit the system, you saw some uh, uh, pairs popping out of the vacuum. And if you manage to compress them, then you 
probably reach the state that was uh, uh, that happened in the beginning of the universe and you get deconfined quarks and mesons at least for a very short period of time. So that's the motivation. And this means that if we are now in the hadronic phase, there would have to be a phase transition initially thought as to be similar to ice water phase transition, a first order phase transition, where we suppose that the quark Coulomb plasma was like a gas, a non-interacting gas. Uh, this idea led to the, uh, this is a plot by the time of Hagedon, or after, uh, I'm sorry, after the, the early days of QCD, so that uh, when you had here, you have baryonic number and temperature, and these uh, hadrons would be in one phase and QGP in another phase, separated by a first order phase transition, similar to what we have in water. Now, nowadays, lattice QCD helped us in the regime where the, the strong coupling is present and uh, show that actually this is not a first order phase transition. It's more like a first order in part. This is actually opposed to what we saw. We had barren number here and temperature here, but usually nowadays we do the reverse, temperature versus barren number in this way. So it's more like the plot I'm showing here. There is a first order phase transition up to a point at this point, it's second order, and this is the so-called critical point. And from that on, when you go to lower variant numbers, uh, you get to uh, a crossover. So there is no criticality in this, uh, as you would have in the phase or the phase transition. And this is the idea of uh, the, the ra range that we are going to talk about, covered by relativistic heavy-ion collider, which is this region and the CERN LHC, which is uh, uh, probing this uh, matter in this region. There is another uh, important, uh, uh, please keep in mind uh, what I'm going to say now. Uh, uh, there is another experiment running uh, uh, that has run already and will continue to run at RIC, Relativistic Heavy Collider, trying to find this critical endpoint. So th they had been shot at five, 7.7, 11.5, etc., cetera, uh, set of mass energies, trying to find out that the most promising one is around 17 GV. Remember this number, we're going back to the 17 GV in the center of mass. So why then relativistic heavy ion collisions? Because that was the most promising uh, panorama or the most promising scenario for recreating this QGP. Why? Because you could compress uh, now I'm so showing a simulation of calcium, calcium at 200 GV, which is the top grid energy yet, or uh, gold, gold at 5 TV, which is a simulation with impact parameter the, the different from zero. So in this case, you had head-on collisions. And in this case, you had collisions as is scheduled below, which is not head-on, but you have some participants and you have some spectators. This is seen along the beam uh, direction, but if you now look transversely, you see that these systems that you're seeing here could be seen as a dis random distribution uh, uh, transversely. So each collision would, uh, since the nucleon position, the position of the nucleons may change, each collision would show a different distribution, allowing to see some ellipse here, perhaps some uh, triangular shape and so on that you're going to see momentarily. Uh, so LHC, things are similar to what we just saw and the in LHC would uh, also helped Rick uh, collided many different systems, including uh, 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 deuterium gold and uh, hydrogen, helium gold, etc., and calcium to calcium. And LHC collides basically lead lead PLED and of course PP. Um, so uh, the, the original probes that were uh, in before, uh, the, the, uh, the conception was that we should look for changes in the phase diagram corresponding to this phase transition. We should look for J size suppression because the expectation was that if you had some QGP, uh, then the CC bar pair would be uh, uh, color screened by the presence of the other quarks and not see each other on time for get 
uh, for making the, the, the JSA itself. Therefore, uh, it would, uh, you'd observe less JSAs than uh, in, you would observe in VP, for instance. And it should have other probes like direct photons and direct electron pairs, because in this way, you could try to see the evolution of the system. And there was another probe which was uh, comes together since the 1960s uh, uh, in high energy hadron collisions, in high energy collisions, I mean, which is HBT, which is a probe of the dimensions of the source by looking into identical particles. And so the expectation was this volume that would correspond to the plasma should be a big one. Why? Because the, 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 gener the generacy of the QGP, if you consider just two flavors of quarks, would be 37. And if it's first order, you'd have to burn 37 degrees of freedom into three pions, which is the, the most abundant constituent of uh, hydrogen gas, so that you would spend a lot of time doing this process. So you're expecting large um, uh, uh, system sizes. Uh, so this is the RIC. I'll go fast over the four experiments. From these, nowadays, only Phoenix and Star are operational. They were the two big ones on, in the bottom, I'm sorry, in the bottom of this, uh, of this uh, uh, slide. And uh, the other two, Phobos and Prams, are no longer operational. Uh, so uh, this, uh, this is a, a summary of what was seen uh, at RIC. HBT, post Einstein correlations, are the first, not only here, but I just make a little comment that some hints of QGP were formed or seen, actually, at the CERN SPS. So the first uh, laboratory to look for uh, start looking for the QGP was the AGS I mentioned in before. Let me go back an instant. I mentioned before the AGS at VNL was at uh, it was a fixed target measurement at uh, in, uh, in the center of mass it would have five GV of um, energy and the other one was CERN SPS which is an injector of, of LHC operating at 17 GV. Remember what I said remember this number because maybe what uh, I, I was about to mention, what uh, um, SPS tried to see, and they were able to see some hints of the QGP formation, but it was close 1999 because uh, the LHC would start soon to be uh, 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 constructed. So uh, what did they see at RIC was first, uh, at this time also the, the HPT, the, the information on, from correlation of identical particles that would inform about the size of the of the of the system was one of the first to be uh, measured. Again, here they were measured and brought surprises as well, and uh, they were expecting, as I said, that uh, a big uh, some relations between the different di uh, dimensions, that is, transverse to the to the beam, longitudinal to the beam. And they were saw some different results than they expected. And because they were expecting a long uh, uh, QGP phase transition, and what they saw were more like an explosion, a blast wave. Uh, the duration was much was slower, much uh, uh, smaller than expected. So another great discovery was the collective flow of the particles. And that's a major one too, because uh, the QGP was found in this way that it was not a gas, but rather a strong coupled liquid, which was with uh, almost perfect one with very low uh, 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 viscosity. And uh, uh, this, uh, why did they say that? For the reason I'm going to uh, show you soon, because of the correlations among the particles. In a gas, there are no, uh, uh, collective correlations. What they saw were strong collective correlations among the produced particles, showing that this was rather a fluid, uh, actually one of the, the most per perfect fluid that we know of, uh, uh, rather than a gas. And also they saw later, I'm going to show you briefly some of that, uh, some structures that uh, were different than uh, uh, imagined, and some uh, also, oops, I don't know why it's going back, I'm sorry. Uh, 
the and also suppression of jets so jets formed in the medium transversing the medium which if it was a qgp would be suppressed so briefly i'll go through these results the first as i mentioned is hbt let me just give you an idea of what it is hbt is related as i said to identical particles so if you have this is just an illustration two particles emitted from this source that i'm naming one and two in two detectors that i'm naming a and b uh, since they are identical, there are two possibilities to be detected by A and B. One scattered as one going to A and two to B, other cross possibility, because they are identical. So this is a quantum effect. And from this, you can, uh, 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 if you uh, measure the prob probability of measuring simultaneously the two sources and normalize this for, by the individual probabilities, you get a correlation function of these guys kind, which, which ideally is related to the Fourier transform of the source distribution. So if the source is, uh, 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 is uh, uh, Gaussian in shape, you'd see something as Gaussian because of the Fourier transform. If the source is Lorentzian uh, in shape, you see something like an exponential here. And this um, correlation of two particles, so you combine pairs from the same event, it, it, in, in, Actually, this is theoretical. If you go to the experiment, what to do is combine pairs of particles from the same event and normalize this by uh, as some other way so that you get all the information you would have from the event, but no Bose-Einstein correlation. I'm talking about Bose-Einstein because I'm assuming these are bosons here. That's why it's, a, it's an enhanced uh, probability. If it was fermium, the certain pr principle would make it go from uh, reach one as a, a, a maximum and go to zero due to the exclusion. So the variable here is Q invariant is the uh, difference of the four momentum of uh, the particles in the pair. Ideally, if this uh, system would be, uh, uh, as I sketch here, uh, some um, static source, then there would be no dependence on the average momentum of the pair, but only on the relative momentum. Uh, what we see is that they depend on both because the system expands strongly. So let me go back to the previous slide. As I said, Rick showed that you have here a sketch of what it is. Yours, uh, this is the beam. This is the uh, KT and KL are the relative momentum uh, parallel to the beam and transverse to it. And you can decouple these two guys, again, the transverse ones in two more uh, uh, components, one along the, uh, the average momentum of the pair. Remember I said, if these uh, guys expand, they should feel this uh, mom uh, transverse momentum and one's uh, uh, orthogonal to this. So the expectation was that the orthogonal direction would be smaller than the, 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 this component Q out along KT. And the reason is it's more technicality, but it, 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 it's built in some time dependence on this. And what they saw is that it's flattened one. So something was happening. And the explanation is that it's an explosion initially. OK, let me move on. So the other measure that I said was very important was related to the anisotropies, the, the, the flow, that is the measurement according to hydrodynamics that indicates that the system is a fluid. So what is this? You consider, remember uh, the initial uh, uh, transverse uh, distribution that I showed you before, and I showed the, the expectators and the, the, and the, and the, uh, uh, the, the participants. I showed also transverse cross-section of the event. And here I'm smoothing that out. Remember there was in reality, some uh, distribution, random distribution of the nucleons. I'm just making it easier here to explain why. So what you see transversely is that when you do not have a head-on collision, you have an overlapping of the two nuclei and you get a, a, an anisotropic distribution in, this is a transverse plane to the reaction. So the, the nuclei are moving in the uh, orthogonal to the plane of the slide, okay? So then in the direction Z, uh, sorry, X, the, uh, the, 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 uh, the expansion is faster than Y. 
And hydrodynamics make this anisotropy into an anisotropy in momentum. So when you measure uh, the distribution in phi, you see something that is related to this eccentricity of this region. So the way to do that is to expand your uh, spectra in terms of rapidity, PT, but also in terms of the cosine phi, the angle, uh, uh, the azimuthal angle. And what you see here is illustrated that different, uh, 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 that this flow exists for different kinds of particles all seem to flow together. There is a medium that is flowing them, okay? So another thing that was observed at Trick, which is very important, is the, uh, the, the jet quenching. The quenching of, the, of the, the jets that were produced inside the medium. So imagine that if you have a pair of jets back to back, one of the, of the jets is closer to the surface, so it, it can more easily go out, and the other one has to traverse the entire, you see as sketched here, the entire region here, so then it would be quenched, it would be suppressed. And uh, you can see here, this is an historical picture from STAR, one of the big collaborations at REC. And you see in the case of proton-proton, uh, uh, you see the histograms say that you have a back-to-back -back jet. And then if you do the same for deuteron gold, you see the, the red dots. But if you do for gold gold, you see that in one side, you see the peak, in the other side, it's suppressed. So this is jet quenching. And it's shown in this measurement called RAA, which is a measure of uh, the, the, the distribution, the spectrum, let's say, uh, of the uh, lead lead or gold gold collisions, as in this case, normalized to what would be a number, the equivalent number of binary collisions. That is, if you had, in gold gold, in this case, uh, only collisions of the, the, the individual nucleon constituting uh, each of the gold in collisions, then uh, you would have a flat unity ratio. But you see that here, it's rather suppressed uh, in more central collisions, zero to central collisions. Okay, so this, I'm sorry, this is uh, the jet quenching. And the other discovery at Rick, what's later, Rick started to operate in the year 2000, this was came, coming later, was this structure named Rich, the long range near side correlation. Long range because it's long in, in pseudo rapidity or rapidity, in this case it's pseudo rapidity, and it's near in the, the, the azimuthal angle phi. So as if you had, you again have particles in correlation and you combine from each event one particle with a certain momentum range with all the others in this range and you normalize it somehow. I'm going to briefly show you how uh, later. And then you, what you see, you observe is this, a ridge, a structure that goes all the way in rapidity that one has not seen before. Uh, and this can be explained, I forgot to say, uh, also this ridge in terms of Fourier harmonics in terms of the, the, the same way as uh, you could explain the flow, uh, and I'll, but I'll talk a little, a, bit, a little bit more about this soon. So the discovery of uh, the hot and dense QGP at Rick, uh, uh, is exhibits some, uh, exhibits some thermal features. We're not sure it's equilibrated, but we assume that this is locally equilibrated. So I do hydrodynamics at least applies even though it's not ideal hydrodynamics, we know that we have to consider some uh, viscosity, at least some shear viscosity. But it's nearly a perfect fluid. That is, it's, it's almost a, 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 a perfect fluid. And uh, it's very close to the value of one over four pi conjectured by the ads -CFT as a bound limit, as a, a, a lower limit for any fluid. And usually this, all this picture of the dihadron correlation, long uh, range dihadron correlations of the flow measured at Rick is compatible with considering hydrodynamic equations. Remember, eccentricities in the overlap of the region would be transported by hydrodynamics into eccentricities in momenta. So it could be described by uh, 
uh, hydrodynamics. When this is the bulk uh, viscosity, this is pi contains the shear viscosity. And uh, this is uh, in the ideal case, ideal hydro, this is zero, this is zero or negligible. And for uh, solving hydro, you need initial conditions as I, I showed you in the beginning, the overlapping of the two nuclei and the distribution of nucleons there in an equation of state like the one I'm sketching here, relating energy and pressure with temperature. And the, uh, the limit, the, the, the model that usually describes what we have uh, is finalized by the homeotronization process that we call the cooper fry process where all the particles decouple at a certain temperature. So let's jump to the LHC. It's similar to RIC, but much larger. You see here is Geneva. RIC, I forgot to say, is in Long Island, the island where the airports in New York are, more or less in the middle of the island. And uh, uh, CERN is in Geneva. Here's Geneva, here's Lake Le Mans. Here are the Alps, you can see Mont Blanc somewhere there. And this is a drawing of the accelerator because it's actually down 100 meters uh, on the ground. And you see the sketch of the, the, the collaborations. You see uh, four uh, collaborations. Two are la the largest one. These two, Atlas and CMS, are the ones who are responsible for the discovery of Higgs. And uh, these other, this is, uh, they are called multipurpose uh, experiments because they are conceived mainly to search for the Higgs, but they can do many kinds of physics, including the ones that Alice, who is the dedicated uh, experiment to the, the search for of the QGP, and LHCB, which is a dedicated uh, experiment to the study of B physics, the quark B, uh, B physics. But uh, CMS and, and Atlas can do similar things and they have been involved in the heavy ion program since the beginning together with Alice. LHCB is the latest to join. It has joined uh, the heavy ion program in the last few years. So just quickly, uh, uh, just to show, I think I will skip that. If you want, I can come back later. So just to raise, to gain some time. Uh, I had to say that considering the, the I'm sorry, triscoid of S jumped here. This should be square root of S for the proton-proton collisions. This is, uh, I wanted to say that I would have to focus in the heavy ions results because of lack of time. And some of them actually, uh, that I particularly consider very interesting. Uh, some PP collisions, uh, we had some PP collisions at 0 0.9, 2.76, 7, 13 TV in proton-proton. We also had uh, first p lead collisions at 2.76 and then i'm sorry lead lead and then p lead collisions at 502 tv Sandra, uh, sorry. first at 2.7 yes you have 10 15 minutes okay no 10 okay, minutes so i have minutes. to rush okay, okay. so <laughs> these are the energies i have to jump i don't have to these are the compo uh, uh, the, if you want i can explain it later so correlations and uh, collectivity this is the the uh, again, the type of experiment that I showed you before, the ridge, and the, uh, it was observed uh, in lead lead collisions, but it was expected. What was not expected, and it was really a discovery, was made by CMS in, in mid to 2010, was a discovery of a ridge-like uh, structure, very similar to the other one, although much smaller, in PP collisions when uh, events with very high multiplicity above 110 tracks, this one is, um, has more than 200, would lead to a similar structure as this that was not seen in, before in, in, uh, uh, in, in any other system than uh, in AA. So of course, after having discovered in PP, then p -led was expected and it was observed. I don't have the time to explain how it's done, but we can come back in the questions if you want, just to show you what I was meaning about flow because I'm saying that this is an important issue. So you see that here you have various shapes that according to what the fluctuations of each uh, distribute, the fluctuating distribution of the nucleons could be ellipse, it's ellipsoidal, could be triangular, and that hydro would show this uh, uh, 
uh, in momentum space in this way. And here you see a flow-like event. You see that it's not uh, round and it's, it has an ellipsoidal shape. It, it, it's it, usually uh, from uh, very small to about 2 GV is the realm of hydrodynamics, but you can also see flow events in higher uh, multiplicities. And this is related also to the quenching of the jet that I said, that is the path followed by the jets also feels this uh, irregular pattern that was present in the, uh, in the initial. I cannot tell this is the way, technical ways to say. And from this uh, that I was just saying that flow uh, is seen much above the, uh, the, the uh, hydro realm is sketched here, then you can go up to about 100 GeV in uh, transverse momentum. And you can see that here that you see a, a signal of collectivity when you have uh, the momentum of two, four, and six particles. The momentum, no, I mean to say the, the, the V2, the ellipse, uh, elliptical flow of considering two, four, six, or eight particles all on top of each other. Uh, I didn't mention, but let me say that here's the thing. If you correlate two particles, you, you, you can correlate two particles, particles and have another method to correlate four of them, two of them, four of them, or all of them. This is the cumulant and the unzero methods. What the uh, key information here is, when you correlate in the same event more than one particle, what it happens is, oops, it's moving too fast. What it happens is that uh, uh, you, you have less distortion from known flow from jets, for instance. So this shows that this system seems to be a real, really driven by hydro because you have all these, uh, the flow itself driving the several components. So uh, another big discovery here was that uh, PP and PLED had, uh, relate, uh, had very close V3. V3 is related to the triangular shape of the distribution. I should mention that if you have uh, V2, V4, or, or, uh, even numbers, numbers, they can be driven by eccentricities. But V3, V5, V7, etc., are only non-zero if the, the system is not isotropic. So the, if there are fluctuations generating some anisotropies, then they, they are V0, uh, they, they are different from zero. So you see that V3 is, it has to be related to eccentricities, and it is the same for PP and PLED. And again, here you see that the several different components, V2 for different orders, they are showing that this is a really a collective system. And here's another information it's related to mass ordering. That is, heavier particles would flow faster because the common velocity would make the heavier ones have higher momentum here. So then this is what I just said, I can skip. And the other big point was that, remember, we, we are colliding uh, heavy ion collisions uh, uh, for creating the QGP, but we just show you that the, uh, the structure of the, the, the ridge was observed in all systems. That is, here you have PP, PLED, and LED LED. PP with the minimum bias, that is normal multiplicity smaller than 110, you see no ridge. Above 110, when you trigger the particles to be, uh, the events to have high multiplicity, you see the ridge. And similar happens to PLED and LED LED. And these are particles, not charged hadrons, but K0s combined, K0 shorts, uh, and lambdas combined to charged hadrons. So you see, these are all in PP and you see the ridge for all of them. But you saw them uh, also in, in PLED and LED LED and you just saw that the collectivity is present in the two systems as I showed you here. So what about PP? You see that the ridge is present, it doesn't matter if you combine charged hadrons or not. Uh, this is the mass ordering is present only when, again, you consider high multiplicity events and then when you compare with uh, proton-proton, proton-proton-proton uh, 
uh, lead and lead lead, what you see is that they have very similar behavior. Here are the examples of these events. So you see that uh, uh, the, the uh, here's V2, and the other one is v, V2 for two particles, for four, for six. Here you have included for eight. And you see that they're on top of each other, saying that there is a common fluid. And the fluid is driving uh, the, the system so that all of them are indeed uh, uh, behaving as a, a perfect fluid. And I, I have to skip that because I just wanted to show you that we also measure some, uh, some uh, uh, the disappearance of what we saw before we are looking to J size. We see this is a beautiful result where you see upsilon excited states in PP. And when you compare in, in, in lead lead, these guys disappear and you see the excited states melt. So, so uh, uh, the temperature you reach on, on your collision is uh, reflecting on the melting of these particles. So the stronger uh, bind, bounded uh, state is melted at last and the, less, uh, the excited ones, which is less bounded, is uh, melted first. So I don't have much time to talk about this. We also measured electric probes in PLED as compared to PP. Z bosons, we also measured W bosons, and this is a measure of Z bosons in PLED, a 5 TV. And I didn't have, uh, uh, I didn't include it here, but very recently it's about to be published. This is the, uh, we saw T, T bar, top, top, uh, anti top pairs produced in heavy ion collisions. Okay, so this is very exciting. And uh, uh, this is our AA. We also have chat quenching showed a lot. So I will skip that unfortunately, because I want just to mention what we do at SPRACE. So we mainly deal with correlations and both size and correlations on one side. We measured, uh, this is the time when I joined CMS in 2008. Uh, actually this measurement is, is 2010. This was the second uh, measurement by CMS in Bose-Einstein correlations. Actually, CMS was the first to measure Bose-Einstein correlations at TRIC, at, sorry, at LHC, period. The first measurement was uh, in PP at 7 TV and 0 0.9 TV. Then we extended that together with uh, the Kai Lagana and uh, Sunil Dogra. Kai was a master student and Sunil was a, a, a postdoc and extended this in one dimensional measurement to multidimensional measurement. And this is the technique involved, I'm not talking about. And then these are the results. They are beautiful 2D and 3D projections of the, the data. And we study the behavior of this invariant radius with PTOG, sorry. Uh, invariant radius with uh, uh, average KT, it decreasing uh, uh, shows that it was really sensitive to, to the expansion of the system. And we measured in PP a shape that is more like an ellipsoid, ellipsoidal shape uh, where longitudinal radius along the beam is larger than the transverse, completely transverse radius and larger than the transverse that would contain the time. So this was one measurement. We also produced not by another group, but we, we have this together, uh, a measurement with identifying pion scales and uh, uh, in PPP led and led led in a special uh, tracking, a special uh, ident identification. And the same was seen in PP and P led, this uh, basically oval, and uh, in led led, it's basically spherical, the emission region. Okay, so. 13 TV also worked, and this was published last year, December last year. We tried to extend this measurement going from minimum bias, that is a few particles up to uh, almost 250 particles to understand, looking for similarities again, as we saw in the rich case of PP and blood red. And uh, we used three methods to make sure that this would be uh, uh, consistent. And we measured the value of this surface 
the, the, the value of the radius that uh, uh, the effective radius that came out for this system. This is charged hydrons. And we saw that it could be either that this uh, radius would saturate, it leads to a model named Bloom saturation model uh, called glass condensate that predicts the saturation model, or could also be, uh, I didn't show here, but it got, it's also consistent with a continuous rise as in, ha in the hydronic case. And another interesting feature is that we had shown that another similarity with the nucleus nucleus because uh, here, uh, you, this is measuring the, the expansion, transverse expansion is the, 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 you have inverse squared of the invariant radius times uh, as a function of the transverse mass of the particles and uh, the, the inclinations related to the transverse expansion. And this shows that minimum bias is faster than uh, the, the send more, more high multiplicity events. In again, new similarity to heavy ions because uh, it, uh, in there you would see uh, peripheral moves faster than central events. Uh, this is just the same. And there's another uh, 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 work that was developed by uh, Cesar Bernardis. It started with him in, uh, in his uh, visit with a bad fellowship from Papaspi at Rice University, where he was trying to see traces of the influence of the heavy, the, I'm sorry, the strong magnetic field that is produced by constituent by the spectators and uh, uh, the, the, the participants. And that would have an effect First, he measures V2 and V3 clearly uh, for up to uh, 60 uh, GeV in Pt. And uh, then he also measured uh, the, the delta V2 for these zeros. V, delta V2 means the difference between the V2, the uh, elliptic, elliptic flow of these zeros, and uh, the elliptic flow of the zero bars. And because one is C, uh, U bar C, and the other is uh, uh, U C bar, uh, in the QGP, they would feel the electric field differently. They would have V2, uh, they would have a difference in V2 associated to that. And the difference that is measured is a very precise measurement. It's very small, so it's consistent with no uh, sensitivity to this strong magnetic field. I hope that, uh, I'm not sure if Cesar joined, but if you have some questions, he, he's not speaking in this meeting, so maybe he could have an opportunity to talk more. So this is the way we, we it, this is a, an identified measurement in the zeros that uh, I just shown, and in key zero shards and lambdas, that is part of Denner uh, uh, Lemos uh, uh, PhD thesis. This is the way he identified them. And Denner is measuring uh, using femtoscopy, which is the uh, more um, modern, more general name of uh, Bose Einstein correlations because it involves no, can involve no identical particles. And the reason for that is because it is also sensitive to final state interactions. And so if the particles are emitted, they follow some statistics if they are identical. They don't feel anything of this kind if they're not identical, but all of them feel Coulomb interactions uh, at the end or strong interactions, for instance. And that's what he's measuring in his case with lambda lambda bar and K0 short, K lambda lambda and lambda lambda bar. So you see that there are different uh, types of correlations and, uh, and showing that uh, the uh, strong force uh, can be attractive or repulsive or maybe form a, a bound state. So please, look into his talk tomorrow at 4.40 for more details. Then we have uh, also the work in phenomenology. Here is the study of the same phantoscopy, uh, which is the being developed by Isabella Maieto, one of the organizers. And uh, she's studying using this, uh, this technique to study the strong correlations among these zeros. And there's another phenomenological approach in the group which is related to this code CHESS that Denner developed, a complete hydrodynamic evolution system, which couples several different uh, codes 
and can try to describe the heavy ion collisions. So basically, uh, and this is just to show you how fun, how much fun we have when we go to CERN for the heavy ion run. So this is it. I just wanted to show who is the space team. It's not completely updated and the sponsors and to ask you to please join us at Facebook and Twitter and follow us. So I'm sorry if I trespassed a little bit, but it still has a few minutes for questions. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sandra. It's okay. Yes, I think I'm going to put the links for the Facebook, Twitter of the sprays in the Slack so everyone can um, look for it, okay? Okay. Okay, so but I still have I... some some what? time for questions, I presume, right? Yes, 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 of course. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for the thoughts, first, first of all. I'm sorry uh, to, to, to pass, trespass your time, but... Uh, it's okay. It's okay. So we have a question from Breno. Um, okay. Hi, Sandra. Hello, Breno. How are you? Um, I'm fine and you? Fine, fine. Thanks. Go ahead. Uh, first, thank you for the presentation. Uh, I have a, a doubt about the jet quenching phenomena. Okay. Um, you said that we would expect a smaller number of particles, uh, a, a different distribution from uh, particles phi with jet quenching and without jet quenching. Would that also imply that the number of jets in an event would be smaller, would be different than one without that, that phenomenon? Or am I Let me thinking? try to go back to the presentation and see where you were, which slide you were referring to. Let's see. It was um, at the very beginning. Uh, actually, uh, I don't remember the number exactly. Let me see if I can use. Oh, I have to go back and share it again. Okay. Because I just uh, removed it for going faster. I have uh, removed. This is the one share. Okay. Can you see it now? Okay. So uh, yeah. in the very beginning, you said? Yes, okay. yes. The first time you talked about jet quenching. Okay. So this is uh, talking about. Um, I think it's, here, I presume, right? Yes, exactly that one. Yes. Okay. So can you repeat your question? You're saying, how do we know or? Uh, well, thing is that you measure the yield of the jet, right? The yield along small delta phi's, that is particles, jets that are going collinearly, you are going on a jet more clearly, and other particles that you would look, look into back to back. That is, you assume that some particles, some jets are formed in pairs, right? Uh, then you go, one is closer to the surface, so it survives and is a jet after all. And, and hadronizes as a jet, but the other one was inner to the QGP, so it gets melted. So when you look for that uh, back to back to this one, in the case of uh, uh, in the case of uh, 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 gold gold collisions, central ones, you see that uh, you don't see the opposite side jet. That was the intention. Was that your question? Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. Thank you. It's a missing jet. It's melted. Yes. That's why you don't observe it. Um, just another curiosity. Sure. Um, would would this uh, mean that the detector would uh, would actually accuse some missing energy in the in the event or? Oh no, I don't think so because unless oh no, actually this was studied differently. We have studied in CMS and other experiments then um, also some jets and photons to, to look for that. And, and also uh, we have looked into jets and searched for where this energy goes. Because one you, you can see as a jet, and, but the other one it's melted, but where does the energy go? go in? So what you see is that it is distributed over a wider angle. So it goes to lower PT. So it really gets melted. You understand? Yes. 
No. Yes, so it's distributed over a wider range uh, angle. So in this case, the detector does not accuse an energy, but we have the means to, to, to try and grab these particles that were uh, melted uh, from the jet that was melted in the QGP. Okay. Okay, thank you. You're very welcome. Okay, so now, uh, Gabriel Zardo Becker, so thanks, very nice research. And Raissa, uh, do you want to speak up your question? Yes, no problem. Um, so uh, thank you for the presentation. Um, I just had, uh, I think, two questions. Um, so first, um, what are the advantages of using uh, the CMS detector as opposed to the ALICE detector um, in studying one studying um, QGP? Well, CMS is a very, uh, as I said, a multi-purpose uh, detector. And the only thing that we, we miss, I mean, we can do basically uh, most of the, the or basically almost all the, 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 the measurements that Alice does, except for PID, which in Alice is very, is excellent. They have time of flight, they have uh, other means and we don't yet, but we are cons uh, constructing one detector and soon we'll have uh, uh, also a, a particle ID, uh, a detector that will be able to allow us to more easily do PID. Although, as I showed, you can also do that, but it's harder. It has to have a specific tracking, it's complicated. But what's the advantage? I think it's just because it's, uh, you can do, usually the group has been involved in multiple things. For instance, in very high multiplicity, we have a larger coverage in rapidity, see? So uh, it's uh, two pi a coverage in phi, and it, 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 it's from minus 2.4 to 2.4 in pseudo rapidity. So it's a, a big and complete detector. So, and we have been able to do basically all the measurements that Alice Atlas do, except for the PID, which will be uh, hopefully improved soon. It's after the, the long shutdown three, I think. Okay, and uh, I just had another question. Um, how do you experimentally determine um, all the characteristics of this fluid? Because I mean, you mentioned viscosity, and I was just wondering, since it's not like unusual, uh, because if it's unusual fluid, you know how to do rheology, but how do you do in this case? Well, we actually look into the particles and we see that first uh, they flow basically uh, all particles flow together. And uh, what we do usually is comparing with uh, calculations, right? To conclude that uh, I, I may have a, a very tiny uh, plot, but uh, I hope I included it, uh, showing that the predictions of um, uh, the QGP for a perfect fluid almost perfect fluid, the calculations, oh, where did I put this? Um, I hope to find it just a sec. Uh, they were closer to this, uh, here, let me try and uh, enlarge this. This is a calculation from some time ago by, by Matt Luzum, who is a professor at USP. And you see, these are different values of the eta over s, which is, has this limit of uh, one over four pi calculated for the ads cft conjecture. And you see that it's closer, uh, one of four pi is close to 0 0.08. And you see that it's close to these values that this is compared with star data. It's an old plot. I, I didn't uh, look for a new one, but you see uh, it's, almost uh, close to the perfect fluid. And you see that there is, uh, there is viscosity, it's needed for some uh, measurements, but it's, uh, it's, uh, um, it's away from the, the ideal uh, hydrogen gas, but it's uh, almost close to a perfect fluid. It's comparing with experiments, not direct measurements, of course. Uh, I'm sorry, comparing with theory not experiments. Okay, thanks. Um, 
I just maybe if I could ask just one more question. I didn't really get what this V2 is. Okay. Yeah, I was real fast. I'm sorry. Um, let me see if I can see this. This V2 is one of the Fourier harmonics that we expand. Let me pick up that uh, slide. Um, All right. So uh, perhaps here is better. You see, when you have these uh, collisions, if it's if it's uh, if it is central collision, you still may have this uh, anisotropy, but then it is basically driven by fluctuations, nothing else. When you have uh, semi-central or semi-peripheral collisions, as is scattered here, you would have uh, an overlapping region, which could be like a ellipsoidal shape, triangular shape, quadrangular shape, and so on. And in hydrodynamics, these different uh, distributions are converted into different components of E2. So it's basically converting eccentricities into this is a topic of anisotropy in the momentum space. Or fluctuations, in the case of V3, as I said, it, uh, it for uh, symm symmetry reasons, V3, if the system is completely symmetric, would be zero. What drives V3 different from zero are fluctuations. Is it a little clearer? Yes, of course. course. Uh, thank you very much. I'm, I'm sorry if it wasn't, but uh, I can look for another uh, equation probably to let you know. Thank you. Uh, Sandra, é, eu vou fazer essa em português. A gente tem um minutinho para responder essa última já, porque eu achei que ela foi bem interessante, foi do João Caetano. Ele perguntou uh -huh. se você é a favor é, da construção de um novo acelerador e qual seria o grande ob objetivo em física de partículas com esse acelerador. Eu acho que na ideia é um acelerador maior, talvez. Eu acho é. que foi isso que ele quis okay. dizer, talvez. Ok, I'll, I'll, Se I'll responder translate. responder rapidinho. Ok, I'll translate <laughs> briefly. He, uh, João Caetano is asking me if I'm in, I, what I think about the next generation. If I'm in favor of constructing a new accelerator. Of course I am. I think we should move on. There are many, many other things that, uh, in, that would be interesting, not only in this field, but also we see uh, in higher energy particle physics, we have... Uh, search for dark matter that starts at uh, freak and so on. So there is a, in my field, in our field, there is a particular, um, it's about, it's decided already to have a, 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 um, another detector, which is another accelerator, which is ERIC, electron and ion collision. And this is, you know, in a sense, similar to people who already heard about, um, uh, the uh, deep elastic scattering processes, in a sense that it will search for similar uh, things. And uh, one of the descriptions that we have in this field is one of the models is hydro, as I emphasized several times. And you have a distribution which is, could be calculated, initial distribution by a so-called Glauber model or by the color glass condensate that I mentioned. This is a, 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 a I didn't mention that much, but what this model is, is it considers that in the collisions, actually when you, you enlarge the energy, what happens is that there's a pileup of gluons in the initial state that could be responsible for a, a most of what we observe experimentally. And this is a, a, an alternative model uh, as compared to the hydro in some cases. So it's not settled. Uh, there are things when one describes better than the other, but ERIC is the purpose of uh, uh, trying to clarify these issues. When you attain very, very high energies and you'll be able to, to scrutinize the proton and the I or more in, in, in deep and searching for these saturation models, predictions and so forth. Nice, uh, nice. 
uh, answer, Sandra. I think this question, actually, everyone who is inter interested in particle physics have this thinking, of what, what are we going to do now? More accelerators and all, all this stuff. So thank you very oh, there, much. There is a large Hadron Collider. Uh, I mean, the follow-up of Hadron Collider, right? It's under discussion, too. So it yes. will be much larger and, uh, and yes. larger energies. Sorry. OK, thank you very much. Thank you for the question. Thank you very much for the talk. And then all the answers, and I'm going to send you the link of this leg so people can ask you more stuff, stuff there. Please do. I'll be happy to answer. <laughs> okay. Thank you.